Hi, and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. I've got a two-for-one project for you today. I'm going to teach you a new layout as well as a background technique. In addition to that, you're going to be able to find the card layout with the cutting dimensions down in the video description below. You'll find a link there that will also lead you over to the pictures. If this is your first time visiting my channel, I would love to encourage you to subscribe. Make sure to click that bell icon so that you'll get notifications when I share a new video here on YouTube as well as when I'm live. Let's head over the stamp table and let's get started on today's project. I want to make sure that you begin by protecting your work surface. Since we're going to be using ink refills for this background, it can get a little messy, so you'll want to make sure that it's contained. I'm starting with a piece of Whisper White cardstock. This measures three and three quarters of an inch by five. We're going to work on the background technique first, and then we're going to walk through the cutting dimensions by piecing this card together for the layout. I'm going to be using a styrofoam paper plate to house what's going to be my mock ink pad. I have a package of baby wipes here. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be creating my own ink pad on this plate with the baby wipes as the foundation. I like to use three of them. So I'm going to use one here and then I'm just going to line these up to make that mock ink pad. This is where we're going to place the ink refills. Because the baby wipes are damp, it's going to allow the ink refill to spread, which is going to create a platform for your stamp. I do recommend that when you choose your stamp that it's a solid image and you want to get an idea of how much area you need to cover. You can see this is a fairly small stamp that I'm going to be using today. But keep in mind you can use any size stamp. Just make sure you cover an area wide enough to cover the stamp itself. I'm going to be using three reinker colors and I'm going to start with the darkest color first. Now this is lovely lipstick and I'm going to start by just dropping it in a small palette around the baby wipe. I'm then switching over to Melon Mambo and I'm going to fill in some of those white areas and I do have a third color so I want to leave a little bit of room for that. My final color is Rococo Rose. This is going to be filled in those white areas. It's almost impossible to cover every little spot perfectly without muddying the colors. So what I like to do is I like to take my stamp and I like to ink it on here a couple times and this is where my scratch paper comes into play. So I'm going to stamp it off over here and then I'm going to ink it a couple more times. I'm trying not to travel too much to mix the colors together because I want there to be a definite differentiation between the tones to create a more realistic background to this card. I'm going to set that off to the side. That's now going to act as our ink pad. So I'll go ahead and I'll ink up that stamp and then I'm going to stamp that here. Now I'm going to work randomly on this cardstock and you're going to see what beautiful tones this is going to leave. I'm also going to turn the cardstock so that I can get a varied pattern of the flowers that I'm using. We're going to go ahead and just fill this in randomly. I'm working outside the perimeters of the cardstock as well. I want to make sure that this is going to look more like patterned paper than it is a stamp. And I'm also turning the paper and not turning my hand to make it easier for me. Take your time when you're using a solid stamp so that you get a really nice crisp image. But you can see the merit of colors here. Isn't this pretty? Just think of the possibilities. Just make sure you're choosing a dark, a medium, and a light shade of the same color family. If you're going to experiment by mixing colors, please keep in mind that they'll create a different shade. So for instance, if you were to put blue and yellow together, you're going to get a shade of green. The cleanup is very, very easy. All you have to do is fold it in half and just throw this away. The great thing about this as well is you've got a lot of life left in here. So you're going to be able to create multiple backgrounds on this until the ink gets too light to your liking. I'm going to set that aside for just a moment. And since we're working with the ink, I've got a small piece of Whisper White cardstock here. And this is where I'm going to stamp the greeting. I'll be using my Memento Black ink pad for this. And I'm choosing the greeting Get Well. And I did take this from a different stamp set. This is from the Healing Hugs stamp set. You'll see that image here. I also love the varied flowers and leaves that are inside this stamp set. There's some beautiful greetings in here for both the inside and outside of your cards. That floral image I just used came from the Floral Essence stamp set. And you'll see that here. Lots of pretty images in here as well as some greetings. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ink that up and we'll stamp that right here in the center. I'll set the greeting off to the side and now I'm going to bring in my paper trimmer. The trimmer has a light blade for scoring and also a dark blade for cutting. And I love that they navigate up and down out of the way so that they're easy to keep on the track at the same time. We've got our stamped background here. We'll open up the trimmer and we'll line this up at one and a half inches. Trimmer is that the cutting dimensions are printed 
with a clear coat finish. So you don't have to worry about them rubbing off. There's a straight ledge here at the top and there's also one at the bottom so you can make sure that your cardstock is well aligned. So here at the one inch mark, I'm gonna bring up the dark blade, which is for cutting, and we are going to slice. We're gonna save this piece off to the side because we're gonna come back to that. Now we're gonna turn this and we're gonna cut it at one and three quarters of an inch. And I'll line that up again and then we'll slice. So now we have these two pieces. Do keep them in order so that you're able to match up the pattern when we get to the next step. This piece that remains is two and one quarter inches wide, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna turn it, and we're gonna cut it at one and three quarters. And again, I've got my dark blade here, and we'll just cut that. And again, I'm gonna leave these close together so that I know they're matched up. I have a piece of Rococo Rose cardstock here. This measures four by five and a quarter, and this is gonna house those panels. I'll be honest with you, I don't do too many things straight. So I like to turn my cardstock horizontally. This will allow me to look visually to see if my panels are straight. I'm gonna start with those two skinny pieces that we kept here together. I'm gonna work with the bottom panel first. I'm gonna turn that over and I'm gonna add adhesive to the back side. I love the silicone craft sheet because adhesive will not stick to it. It'll simply rub right off. The same is with hot glue and liquid glue. Now this is only gonna have about an eighth of an inch of a border all the way around. And I'm not gonna press too hard just in case I have to kind of shimmy this one way or the other. I know this piece is going to continue the pattern here. So I'm gonna turn this over and I'm gonna add adhesive to the back side of this as well. Making sure that I've got proper alignment to continue the pattern, I'm looking to line up this edge one panel to the next along the outside edge here across the top so that there's about equal distance. Now that that's finished, I can go ahead and work on the other panel. So this is the larger piece that's gonna go here on the bottom and you're gonna see how the pattern continues. Again, we're gonna flip that over and we're gonna add adhesive to the sides. And just like we've done before, we're gonna make sure that we're mimicking that pattern. I am looking now to make sure that this panel aligns well with the panel that's here. So I'm looking along this edge and along the top and then I'll adhere that in place. This is the last panel that's gonna fit here. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip that over as well and we'll add more adhesive, making sure that my pattern is going to align I'm looking again to the outside edge as well as the inside to align them the best that I can. Once I'm happy, we'll just press that in place. Now, because I often have ink on my hands, I don't like to rub and secure it from the front. So I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna rub from the back to make sure that those panels are good and stuck. My next step is the card base. This is lovely lipstick. It's measuring five and a half by eight and a half. I did score it right before you joined me. I like to use my bone folder for a nice crisp edge on my card base. This piece now is going to get adhered to it. So I'll add adhesive now in my four corners. With my smaller panels at the top, I'm gonna go ahead and adhere this to the card base. Remember the greeting? Well, I decided to do the exact same layering that I did for the card. So I'm gonna flip this over and I've got another piece of cardstock already cut. This piece measures two by two, but of course you can adjust the size. I'm gonna go ahead and flip that over as well. And then I'll border this on another piece of lovely lipstick so that we have color coordination here. Now I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna add dimensionals to the back side. And I'm also gonna add an embellishment to this card. Now I'm very generous with my dimensionals since I know that most of my cards are going to get mailed and I wanna make sure that it holds up well through the postage machine at the post office. I'm using that take your pick tool with the paper piercing tool attachment to remove those paper backings from those dimensionals. That's gonna give a little bit of elevation to this card. Now to mount this, I'm going to put it in the center, but it's gonna look like it's a bit of an illusion because this is off-centered. So just eye it to the center the best that you can and then I'll tack that in place. I'm gonna be using the Noble Peacock Rhinestones. This pink color worked perfectly. And again, with my Take Your Pick tool, I'm gonna to lift them off here because they already have glue dots on the back. This was a perfect place for me to place those. So I'm gonna place one here, I'll place another next to it, and then one more over this one. There you go, it's a very simple card, but that layout and that color scheme with that very fun background really makes this card stunning. Here's the one we created today, the one I created before you joined me. If you don't already have a copy of the Stampin' Up! catalog, you can request a copy of the new 2020-2021 annual catalog over on my website at lisastampstudio.com. Click on Contact Me. If you have enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up here on YouTube. It certainly helps, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.